So I'm going to be talking about uh, pattern matching in Elixir. Uh, this is one of my favorite aspects and I just was immediately in love with it as I started the language. So what are we going to be talking about? So first of all, what is pattern matching? Uh, why should we use it? Uh, the basics of using it and a little live coding example. So first of all, what is pattern matching? Uh, well, you may be familiar with it uh, in like regex, right? There's many ways to do pattern matching. It's a little bit different in Elixir. Uh, the most basic example would just be uh, setting a value. So you don't have any pattern, you just have a variable name on the left hand side and data on the right hand and it just sets it. Uh, but you can do more complex patterns if you use the collections available in Elixir like uh, lists or tuples or maps and you can even have lists within tuples within maps, right? So we have an example here uh, with ABC being set to one, two, three, and there's multiple ways to break this down and set those values within it. So A will take on the value of one, B will take on the value of two, etc. Uh, in the second example, we have uh, Y2 being matched against one, two. So here we have uh, a tuple that's partly already uh, has a value in it, the two, and partially variable. So the two will have to match against the two, and the y can, is free to take on a value. And in the final example, uh, we're simply setting name to John using this map pattern. Right? Now, uh, what was it? this is not uh, simply setting the value, right? There's, uh, I think if we look at uh, JavaScript, right? You can have an object that has, uh, let's say, an A and a B value, and now with ES6, you can decompose it within one line, right? This is not meant for just setting. There's many applications to this. So it's not exactly your typical assignment operator, here we have an example uh, where we're setting x to be 5 with a bit of a complicated map syntax, but then we're not even setting a value in the second expression. We're just matching against uh, a value that is already set, right? We're saying y is 10 and x equals 5. So this will throw an error if x is not 5, but it will not set any value. So why would you use that? Well, let's get into that. You can use these for much more sophisticated switch statements. Right? We have here just an example where we have four, three types of messages coming in. Right? We have insert, update, and delete. And insert has uh, a secondary check, which is we can't insert a null payload. Right? If we're doing this uh, within JavaScript on the left, then we're going to have to do this with if statements. Because if we don't do it with if, if we use the switch, it becomes uh, much more verbose. Right? We're now not only uh, doing a switch on the message type, but we also have an additional check within one of the cases that the payload's not null. Uh, Elixir can handle this much more elegantly by simply <coughs> pattern matching on uh, two values at the same time and saying, okay, I care about one of the values here, but I don't necessarily care about the payload when it's not relevant, as we can see in the subsequent cases. Now, there's also another thing at play here, which is you can see in handle info, I'm not uh, passing a value in directly. I've already said this is a tuple. Right, which leads us to our next use, which is we can increase the confidence of the input we're receiving within a function by pattern matching on that input at the function level. So here we're saying that when we're passing in a value as user for a greeting, that must be a map with a name property. Right? If it won't, that function simply won't exist for that input. And you can combine this with guards so that you can say that name within this map also must be binary. Uh, and the inverse is, is also true. 
well, we can use this uh, on our output. So we don't have to uh, really have uh, much extra validation and error throwing when we can uh, easily say that what I'm getting from this is what I'm expecting, right? We don't have to have all these extra tries and catches and guards. We can evaluate that we have the correct result with one line, right? And this doesn't necessarily need to be the typical OK check that we're doing, but it could also be just that it is a tuple to begin with, right? So let's get into actually using it, right? Here we can use it to set values. So we've got x being set to 5, uh, x being set to 1 and 2. Now these evaluate because x can take on that pattern, right? We're not doing anything complicated. The second one can also evaluate because y is able to take on the value of 1 and z able to take on the value of 2. But what if, right, we wanted to pattern match instead uh, with the variable z having a specific value already, right? This is where pinning comes in. So when we're pinning, what we're saying is we have this dynamic value. Now I want to use it on the left-hand side of my match operation. And this is, I think, I looked into this a bit. I think this is one of the differences between Erlang and Elixir. It seems like uh, in Erlang, there's no kind of resetting of variables within the left-hand side. Once you have it, it's there. You got to unset it or something. I'm not too familiar with Erlang, so correct me if I'm wrong about this. But this is, I think, a bit unique to Elixir and pattern matching. Uh, now, I think one of the, I was not clear on how we would use this when I first encountered this in the Elixir tutorials. So I've got just a quick example here. So we've got uh, a function for evaluating the dog satisfaction of a man. Okay? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So the, the man has two properties. He's got a name and a dog type that he currently has. Right? And wanted dog type is not part of his map. So we're going to have to get it dynamically. So we get our wanted dog type. Okay? And then when we pattern match on man, right, we can pin our wanted dog type as his dog type, right? And it will say that we're not allowed to change this value. It has to match on that pattern where wanted dog type is this value. And if that can be matched, then we proceed to saying that the man is satisfied with their wanted dog type. Otherwise, we go to the next case where we extract the value and we say, Oops, let's go back. We say that he is dissatisfied with the dog that he has, and he wants this wanted dog type. Right? Uh, what was the next one? So, in the past, we had a, uh, a handle info function, right? But it was really just a wrapper for a case statement. Well, and then having these handlers. What's really great about Elixir is that instead of uh, having to have um, these handler functions like handle insert, we can pattern match on the input of the function, as we're doing here, and uh, kind of just reduce the amount of code we're creating. So instead of having a handle insert function, we simply have a handle info function that pattern matches against an insert. And uh, it's great because sometimes you can get pretty deep into these if-else, like we could be within an if-else and then doing one nested one further. This just removes one right off the bat already, which just really helps with clarity. Okay. Now, the <laughs> we can also go very deep with... Uh, this pattern matching, right? Uh, auth0 has two types of tokens, for example. We use Auth0 here on our project, and it has the API token and a user token. And the API token and user token both have sub-values, 
but the API token conforms to a very specific pattern, which it has a string of 32 bytes, followed by at clients. So we can extract the client ID from that string simply using pattern matching. Now, it's not uh, as powerful as regex, for example, but I could do something like, say, uh, my name, bytes, size, four, and then at sweetiq.com, and then we match this with mark at sweetiq.com. Oops, I did an extra one there. Oh no. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this. Ah oh, no, this is all going wrong. All right, here we go. This is the one. We did it. No. Oh no. <laughs> we're, we're almost there. We're going to get it. I swear, this just ha I mean, it just happened one time. I was e easily able to do it. All right, we made it. We got it out there. Now if I write name, it's just, it should be just Mark, right? We got it. However, it, it needs to be a very well-defined format. So if I use something that's not four characters in length, it's going to not be able to match it. So if I just say Tim, it doesn't work. But if you have a well-defined string format, then it's great. OK, now let's get to some of it in action. So what I have here is we have a very simple finite state machine example from Wikipedia. It's a turnstile, right? You've got a turnstile. You can't push it. It's locked. You put a coin in. You can then push it. So we're just going to build this uh, using pattern matching. So we're going to put our states here. And we're going to say we have at locked is locked. And we've got at unlocked is unlocked. And then we're going to define some action functions. So we're going to say uh, insert coin on our state and return a state. And we've got our states are locked and unlocked. And inserting coin in both cases is going to unlock it. Right, and then we got another two for our other action, which is push turnstile. And in both cases, it's going to be locked again. Right? So this is a little boring, because normally you have side effects. So we're going to enhance the experience with a little virtual reality. OK? We're going to say when we insert the coin on a locked state that it's going to, uh, say, turnstile unlocks with a click. And when we do it here, when it's unlocked, we're going to say coin falls through to change drawer. OK. And then when we push turnstile while it's locked, we're going to uh, say turnstile doesn't budge. And when we push the turnstile while it's unlocked, we're going to say turnstile rotates and then locks with a click. All right, and we've got our turnstile VR experience. And we're going to try IEX mix. Maybe this just works. Unusual. Yeah, that's fine. OK. And then pattern demo dot FSM dot insert coin on locked. 
gives us unlocked. And if we give it just garbage, like bad state, it can't find the function. All right, so we're going to do one more thing here, which is define our initial state as locked. All right, and now we can incorporate this into a gen server, right? Which I've kind of got templated out here. And we will define inserting a coin as uh, gen server dot call. We pass in our PID and give it that. And then for our push turn style, we will then just give it a push turn style atom. And now we have to handle these and we're going to handle them with pattern matching. So we're going to define our handle call on a insert coin. We don't care who it comes from and we do care about our state. And we're going to say we're going to call fsm dot insert coin on our state. And we're going to pattern match on that output, right? And get our new state and message. And we're going to follow the gen server reply format with a reply, the reply message, and set the new state. Now we're just going to repeat this for our push turn style. Okay. Now, I think one thing I forgot to do was give it an initial state here. So we're going to call this fsm.initialState. And let's see if it works. All right. So if I do fsm, so pattern demo dot fsm server dot push turnstile turnstile doesn't budge and then if we insert a coin turnstile unlocks we push the or we need another coin coin falls through and if we push turnstile again turnstile rotates and locks the click so that's just a practical example of using pattern matching in a finite state machine uh, then, I mean, all I got left to talk about is Elixir at Sweet IQ. I just want to do a small little ad. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got a, <laughs> we've got a, a team uh, working on a task management system in Elixir. Uh, the idea is to incorporate both. Uh, tasks accomplished by uh, machines automatically and by humans in the same workflow. The idea is that for these machine ones, uh, it should just be a very simple interface to the program itself and should be accomplished by whatever means you can do to fulfill it. I'm not saying that we're using machine learning here, but if you wanted to use machine learning to solve a task and you're proficient at it, there would be room to do that. There's really uh, whatever method you can think of for automating what users are doing, you are free to implement that. And that's the project I'm working on. All right. And that's all I got to say.